the topic which we are going to discuss today is urinary retention and our focus will be women urinary retention is one of the most prevalent presenting urologic complaint in the emergency department but the good news for us is that it is much less common in female population as compared to the men if you look at the proportion men have 13 times more incidence of urinary retention as compared to their female counterparts the word urinary retention stands for the inability to voluntary void urine you must be able to differentiate a retention of urine from anuria because in anuria the kidneys are not able to produce urine while in urinary retention urine is being produced and it is draining from the kidney through the ureter and reaching up to the bladder getting collected there but patient is not able to empty her bladder that's what is called as urinary retention the clinical presentation can be of three types acute one is the most dramatic one when patient presents with lot of agony of pain and urgency while inability to empty her bladder then there can be a chronic version sometimes it can be so slow and indolent that patient might not have any symptoms it might be just a finding of ultrasound or clinical examination then there is a third variety where a chronic pathology is going on and suddenly some acute event predisposes the dramatic presentation this is maybe the most commonly seen version of urinary retention talking about the cause it can be only one of the two either there is an obstruction present at the urethral level or the bladder muscle is refusing to contract before we proceed into the detailed classification of the causes let me make one thing very clear that bladder outflow obstruction which we also call as boo is very rare in women and it is much more commonly seen in men the reason is that prostrate which is present in men causes this kind of obstruction in aging men while the absence of prostate prevents women from having this entity the clinical significance of understanding this concept is that in women uroflowmetry which is done very frequently in men to see bladder outflow obstruction is very very rarely required pathophysiologically i told you before that the causes can be only two either there is some obstruction at the outlet or the bladder is refusing to contract but when we have to classify these causes we can classify them based on whether there is an anatomical lesion those are called anatomical cause or if there is no anatomical cause we call them functional causes among the anatomical causes we divide them into four groups extrinsic extrinsic means outside the urethra some other unrelated organ or pathology is producing the symptom then there can be reasons which are basically in the urethra then third thing is something which is not usually a part of our body is present in the lumen of the urethra and then the fourth anatomical cause can be impairment of detrusor activity now among the extrinsic causes where there is some external factor it can be pelvic organ prolapse specifically the cystocele component of it then there can be uterine fibroids and specifically the posterior wall fibroid which are pulling the uterus backward making it retroverted so that the cervix which is a firm structure now jets forward thus the urethra gets compressed 
between the bony pelvic symphysis and the firm cervix, leading to urinary retention. Poorly fitting vaginal pessaries which are used to reduce prolapse or for SUI are the other causes and one another important cause where we have to elicit the history is if any anti-incontinent procedure was performed for the lady before so a tight tape in mid urethra can also cause retention of urine. The causes in the urethra can be a stricture can be stenosis of the meatus, a urethral carinkle, or a diverticulum. However, I want to emphasize one point that meatal stenosis was thought to be a very common entity in women a few decades ago. However, current understanding doesn't support that. So what happens in the real world is, many a times, a wrong diagnosis of meatal stenosis is made and as a treatment option, when urethra is dilated for the same, it injures the inside of the urethra, which later forms strictures, leading to urinary retention as an iatrogenic cause. More rarely, a stone, a tumor or a foreign body in the lumen of the urethra can lead to urinary retention. Impaired deutrosal activity is seen in cases of senile bladder changes or in diabetes or in neurogenic causes which are seen in lower motor neuron disease. Functional causes means where the anatomy is perfectly normal but the organs are not functioning properly. Pelvic fluid dyssynergy is one of the important causes of impaired activity of bladder muscles and the bladder and neck. Severe pain, even the effect of analgesia or anesthesia, epidural in particular, can also lead to perioperative or postoperative urinary retention. Infection and inflammation can also be one of the causes where specifically because of the pain stimulus, patient goes into urinary retention. Genital herpes is a typical example of the same. Then there are some drugs which can also cause urinary retention as their side effects. These include opioids, antipsychotics, antidepressants, antimuscarinic agents and also the alpha adrenergic agonist. Now, there are a few conditions related to pregnancy which one must know well as a cause of urinary retention. First is a retroverted gravid uterus. Retroverted uterus either because of adhesions, endometriosis, posterior wall fibroid or just like that as a variation to normal when harbors a fetus, it becomes bulky and gets incarcerated in the pouch of Douglas causing forward jetting of the cervix, leading to compression of bladder neck against the bony symphysis. Second important cause to mention is when a hematocele forms in ectopic pregnancies. It again tends to compress the urethra against the bone. These symptoms are important to understand cause if the mind does not know, eyes will not be able to see when the patient presents with these symptoms. In the postpartum period also, urinary retention is not uncommon. It can happen because of a, some neuropathy, muscle injury, pain, coupled with laxity of tissues due to changes in hormonal milieu. As I have mentioned earlier, the clinical presentation can be either acute and dramatic or chronic and indolent. In the acute one, patient usually lands up in the emergency department with severe pain and urgency to pass urine but not able to do so. She will have a palpable, percussable and painful bladder on examination. First, put a catheter to drain the bladder and relieve her symptoms. Then only you must proceed for a detailed history taking. 
In the chronic variety, patient will give history of a poor urinary stream, feeling of incomplete emptying and recurrent episodes of cystitis. Ultrasound will confirm the diagnosis, revealing a high residual urine in bladder post voiding. Anything more than 100 ml in presence of symptoms needs an evaluation. When you take history in detail after making the patient comfortable, give attention to the age, menopausal status and parity. In chief complaints, duration of symptoms need to be addressed. Important question to be asked here is if it is associated with pain or not. Painless retention is usually associated with diabetes or neurological causes. In the preceding days or months, if there were symptoms of poor urinary stream, feeling of incomplete voiding or recurrent cystitis, it should be documented. Association with menstrual cycle is important to rule out uterine or gynecological causes. Like if it is due to fibroid, symptoms will be more prominent premenstrually owing to the congestion and will get relieved as the patient starts menstruating. Medical history should include history of diabetes, mellitus, neurological issues or any drug intake. In the surgical history, find out if any vaginal or pelvic procedure was performed specifically related to incontinence. Examine the abdomen first for a palpable, percussible and or a painful bladder. Rule out fibroids and fixed retroverted uterus in an abdominal pelvic exam after emptying the bladder. Patient should be encouraged to bear down or cough forcefully to note down presence and the full extent of cystocele if present. Keep your eyes open to note down urethral carankle. And last but not the least, don't forget to check the pelvic muscle tone, perineal sensation and reflexes, namely clitoral reflex and the anal wing. Talking about the investigation, urine microscopic examination is a must. Urine culture needs to be decided once you have the report of urine microscopy in hand. Ultrasound should be done to rule out fibroids or other anatomical issues. It will also help to decide or evaluate the post-void residual urine. Uroflometry, let me emphasize it again, is very rarely required in cases where the lady presents with a urinary retention. Treatment starts even before you take detailed history as draining the bladder and relieving her of the agony is the primary objective. After that, we take our own time to make a diagnosis and treat accordingly. For example, the treatment for a fibroid or a prolapse or stricture can be surgical. Most of the times, pregnancy-related causes require expectant management either just wait and watch or just an insertion of foley catheter or a pessary. Lifestyle modifications play a big role in pelvic floor issues, in diabetes related urinary retention and also in neural causes or neurogenic causes. Bladder drill behavior modification and clean intermittent catheterization can be tried. Pelvic flow muscle training is a very important therapy in case patient is having pelvic floor dyssynergy and other pelvic flow related disorders. In a nutshell, just remember three things. In women, retention of urine is less common when compared to men. Keep an open mind and think of all the possible causes when treating the patient. Just putting a catheter and relieving her of those agonizing symptoms is not enough. You have to finally find out the cause and treat it. Third, anticipate it. 
when a patient presents with poor stream, incomplete voiding and high residual volume in ultrasound, a good doctor should think it then and there so that the patient does not land up an emergency department with acute agonizing symptoms of urinary retention. Thank you.